Good morning. Let's try that again. Good morning. Oh, that's much, much better. Good morning. You're very uh, welcome to morning worship at Mavilla Abbey Church. Uh, whether it's your weekly habit to uh, be part of our gathering or an occasional treat, or maybe it's your first time being here in the building or, or worshipping with us online. If you're watching online and taking part that way, welcome to you uh, this morning as well. And you're especially welcome uh, today if you're a woman. Yes, because Friday was International Women's Day and today is Mothering Sunday when we celebrate our mums and all they do uh, or did for us. We should have a slide for Mother's Day, I think, Yvonne, have we got that? Um, uh, for those of you who are a mum or, or a granny or have a mum or granny to celebrate, we hope it's, um, it's a happy day that you're going to be blessed and treated today if you haven't already. But we know it can also be a difficult day for those of us who've maybe uh, lost or lacked a good mum. Or for women who've experienced the pain of not being able to have children. But whatever category you, you fall in today, as a woman, as a, as a church, we want to welcome you, to value you, and to, to love you today. Because God welcomes you, values you, and loves you. So a few announcements uh, before we, uh, we, we begin. Um, Alpha uh, started on uh, Wednesday last week with, with an introduction and uh, we had uh, 24 people join us, uh, join us for, for Alpha. Wonderful, wonderful buzz uh, uh, together. Um, if you don't know what Alpha is, it is uh, an 11 week uh, course that explores the big questions of life. Um, why am I here? Um, uh, who is Jesus? Why, why did he die? Um, big questions of life. It's still time to uh, sign up for Alpha, especially if you've got a non-Christian friend or uh, 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 someone who's not a churchgoer who you think Alpha would be great for. If you'd like to encourage them to come along, let us know. Uh, we'll be uh, meeting for our second Alpha session this Wednesday at 7.30. Uh, please, please let us know. Next weekend um, is our St. Patrick's celebrations. Next Sunday is St. Patrick's Day, um, but next Saturday, at 11.45 in Downpatrick, um, we are celebrating our St. Patrick Festival service and you're invited to come down. There's a great speaker this year, Bishop Jill Duff. Um, I know Jill from my, my days in Liverpool. Um, she is a, a wonderful uh, woman of God. Uh, she has a really powerful message to bring about revival and uh, she's speaking next Saturday uh, in Down Patrick, uh, Down Cathedral. Um, please come and join us if you can. Uh, 11:45 a.m. and you get a free lunch thrown in as well uh, at, at, at one o'clock. And as part of that service, each uh, church in the diocese of the Church of Ireland um, are going to be given a torch, uh, a bit like an Olympic torch. And we're going to be bringing that back here to Mavilla because next Sunday at 7 p.m. We're inviting you, uh, um, uh, our, we've got our morning worship, our all-age worship at 11 a.m., but next Sunday evening at 7 p.m., we're going to have a special beacon lighting service. Now, this isn't just so that we can uh, uh, light a, a wee fire and uh, warm our hands uh, and all of that. This is a, a symbolic fire. Patrick lit uh, a fire on a mountain as, as a symbol of the kingdom of God coming to Ireland. And uh, we want this to be sort of the launch of a new wave of prayer for, for the fire of the gospel to spread again uh, through our land and in our communities. So please do join us next Saturday and next uh, Sunday evening, uh, if you can, uh, for those things. And um, it's not just um, the, the, the Methodist church or the church in Ireland that are encouraging us to pray. The 24-7 prayer movement have de dedicated this as a year of prayer for the island of Ireland. Uh, we've been encouraging you to take part uh, in prayer through Lent. Next slide, please, Yvonne. Um, and uh, we have a wonderfully creative prayer room set up in our, our Stratford room that you can use. 
uh, on Wednesdays during, during coffee shop. Uh, but from next week, you're going to be able to, to sign up for um, an hour, an hour's uh, section of, a tw of 24 hours of focused prayer from Good Friday. We want to be praying for our community and our land, for the fire of the gospel to spread uh, in this place and to touch hearts uh, once again in this nation. So will you join us uh, in prayer? As we think of prayer... We have come together this morning, hopefully, to pray and connect with God ourselves. Whatever we've come from at home, however we're feeling, let's offer ourselves to God um, in the words of a prayer on the screen. Just give you a moment to read these words, and then we're going to pray them together before we stand to sing our first song of worship. So let's pray. Lord, thank you that you are here with us. Make us aware of your presence as we worship you this morning. Speak to us and help us to listen so that we might know you better. Refill us with your Holy Spirit so that we may love and live for you. Amen. Let's stand together and sing, Dear Lord and Father of Mankind. <laughs>
just prayed in song, dear Lord and Father. Forgive our foolish ways. And you know that's the only way to begin when we come to God. As the prophet Isaiah put it, we all like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way. Our sin cuts us off from God. That's why we need Jesus. In a moment, we're going to sing a song that reminds us that Jesus suffered and was crucified. And that our forgiveness is to be found in him. But what does that mean? Well, allow me for a moment to give you an image. Let, let this left hand here represent you and me. Your life, my life before God. Now let this book here represent all the things we do wrong, our foolish ways, the things that cause a barrier between us and God. There's a barrier between us and God because of our sin. Let this hand here represent Jesus who, who never did anything wrong. He lived a sinless life. There was no barrier between him and his father. Now the Bible in Isaiah 53 says this, we all like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way. And then it, and then it says this, the Lord has laid on him, on Jesus, on the cross, the iniquity, that's all the bad stuff of our lives, has laid it on him. Jesus on the cross was carrying your sin and my sin. And therefore he was cut off from God. Not because of what he'd done wrong, but because of what we have done wrong. And do you see where that leaves us? Free. Free to have a relationship with God. Let's bring our broken and sinful lives before God. And through the mercy of Jesus, let's seek his forgiveness and seek a change in our lives. I invite you to join me in the words of a, an ancient prayer that will enable us to do that. Let's use these words wholeheartedly and honestly as we pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, we are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Father, we thank you for your mercy and your love that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He took the burden of our sin and he buried it in the grave. And he rose again that we may have life with him. Lord, we receive by faith your forgiveness and your new life in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's sing, I believe.
Jesus, thank you for your grace and your love. Thank you, Lord, that um, any day can be a new day when we come to you. But thank you that, Lord, we, we mark uh, Sunday as the day when we gather because Sunday is the day when you rose again. And Lord, today can be a new day for us because of Jesus. Thank you for his death and resurrection that changes everything, changes us. Amen. Amen. Let's take our seats for a moment. Uh, in a minute, Rosie is going to come and uh, uh, lead uh, us in God's word. And, and kids, you're going to go out to your groups in a minute. But we're going we're gonna to sing a song about being part of the big family of God before that. But before we do that, we are going to try and remember our memory verse that has uh, taken us through this journey in the book of Acts. And there are some actions that go with this memory verse. Uh, and these are some words that Jesus said. They're on, on the screen. So let's see if we can remember the actions. Jesus says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses. See, Jesus was saying in those words that when the Holy Spirit comes, he would enable us to be like Jesus to other people. Let's say those words again. Jesus says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses. May that be our prayer as we continue to think about these things uh, this morning. So children, you're going to go out in a moment into your, to your groups and, and I'm really excited for what you've got uh, uh, this morning for, that your leaders have prepared for you and I'm really excited at what Rosie's got prepared for uh, the rest of us in here. But let's now sing about what it means to be part of the big family of God because some of us are very small, like me, some of us are very tall, So let's stand together. Hopefully this is going to play. Some of us are big and tall. Some of us are very small. Some of us like pink, some like blue. Some of us like reading books. Some of us like feeding ducks. That's because we're
I saw lots of blokes desperately trying to avoid eye contact when they were saying you and you and you and you there. Um, we are all part of the big family of God, men and women, boys and girls. And God has things that he wants to speak to us this morning. So kids, you're going to go out to your, your group now as uh, the rest of the adults stay in here. I'm going to pray for you as you go and as we get ready uh, in here to dig into the Bible as well. Father, thank you that we are part of your big family because of Jesus. It doesn't matter uh, whether we are a, a man or a woman, a boy or a girl, whether we're rich or poor, young or old, um, what our nationality is or, or, or our background. Thank you that all of us can be part of your big family. And thank you, Lord, that you have good things to give us. We pray for our children, that you will bless them as they go out to learn more of you together. And we pray for Rosie now as she comes up to open up your word to us. Lord, as we prayed at the beginning, would you speak to us and would you help us to listen that we may love and live for you. Amen. <coughs> This is the, the sixth week of the Acts series, uh, and this week we were covering chapters 21 to 24, so I hope you've been able to read the chapters as we continue to travel through the book of Acts, reliving how the world was beginning to hear about this new Christian faith and the challenges that arose as to how to make the sharing of the word possible and how to set in place guidelines and doctrine and changes in ritual practices that would stand the test of time and also of opposition. Now the Methodists, the Methodists, the methods, the link there, there's a link. <laughs> the methods of communication were very limited in those days. There was word of mouth, there was be letters or scrolls, there was uh, no wires, no ether or social media, no satellites, etc. So the communication involved a lot of traveling to spread the word and mostly on foot or by boat. And there was uh, sadly hostility and persecution from local authorities and even religious leaders and communities who were resistant to their teachings. So people who, who offered to do that, who stood up to do that, risked imprisonment, torture, and even death for their beliefs. And sadly today, it is no different. So they would be traveling to different regions, which meant encountering diverse cultures, languages and customs and communicating the gospel effectively required overcoming uh, these barriers. There were physical hardships, enduring harsh weather conditions, hunger, fatigue, exposure to diseases, having to rely on the hospitality of strangers and the generosity of believers finding food, finding shelter, and support was often challenging. And the problem too of being away from their families and familiar surroundings. The followers of Jesus faced loneliness and isolation, missing the comfort of home. But why were Paul and newly converted people, men and women, willing to endure such hardships, such trials and tribulations? And the short answer is because of Jesus. In John 15, Jesus said, we would not be surprised when we are persecuted because they persecuted him first. And that is Jesus was persecuted for his beliefs for the, what the word that he was bringing to the people. 
So the chapters we are covering this week focus on the trials and tribulations of Paul. Various forms of trials. One was the trials of journeying. These days we hear of some people on their, of their experiences of traveling and early morning starts, airport security, delayed or canceled flights, disruptive passengers, lost baggage, weather conditions on flights, then accommodation not being exactly what was advertised. In comparison to that, in chapter 21, there is the description of Paul's travel itinerary. He was, as we heard last week, working in Ephesus, which would be in modern day Turkey. But he was compelled by the Spirit, compelled by the Spirit to go to Jerusalem. So he and others went with him, first by sea to cause roads, Patara, then on to another ship going to Phoenicia. They landed at Tyre, staying there, staying there for seven days with other disciples who lived there, set sail again, landing at Polytimus, then after a day in land went on to Caesarea in Judea, stayed there for some days, and men made their way by foot to Jerusalem. So can we compare the travels then to traveling today? I know when I went to Israel, I got on a flight from Belfast to London, and then I flew on to uh, Jerusalem and uh, to Israel in a matter of hours, in a matter of hours. This was taking days and just walking, traveling, rough seas, everything. So can we compare it? Which is worse? Well, some would say that traveling to work daily on the motorways in England is worse. Uh, but it is not about comparing the journeys. It is about the reason for the journeys. Paul was convicted to spread the good news about Jesus to as many people as he possibly could in the time that he had. He never gave up, and in all the trials he went through, he never did quit. It was the message of salvation that was so important for him to share. And Paul had experienced the amazing saving grace and forgiveness of God, and he wanted others to have that opportunity to hear about Jesus, who can rescue people from the pit of despair, or rescue people even when life is going okay. Though at times there were difficult seasons for some people, but sure they would feel they would get through them one way or another and then get back on an even keel. But for some people there is that nagging sensation of the back of their minds that there is something missing, as it is sometimes described as a hole that doesn't seem to be able to be feel, filled. So Paul and others witnessed to those people, to the despairing, to the curious, and the seemingly disinterested, also to the aggressive ones. And it is no different today. Was there someone in our lives who spoke to us about Jesus and the need to have him first and foremost in our lives, prompting each of us and encouraging us to give more thought to following Jesus. And the question is for us who have that faith, do we use our journeys to seek opportunities to speak about Jesus, <coughs> even on a journey to the shops? One thing in common we now have with Paul is that sadly there is opposition to the Christian faith and just as diff difficult there is apathy. In the United Kingdom, people have been arrested for sharing the gospel message. People have lost their jobs. Court cases are taking months, even years, to state their case. Messages of hatred posted on social media 
death threats. Yet how many people take in any interest in what is happening about the Christian faith? Jesus gave his life so we can be here today or watching online so that we still can freely worship. And we need to protect that. And there is that same urgency to tell people about Jesus. Paul, for him, he was a scholar, well-educated, but others amongst the disciples had little or no education yet they were still mighty representatives for Jesus. So after the trial of journeying for Paul to Jerusalem and being warned, he was warned that his life was at risk by going there, but he still went obedient to God's call. And he met with James, who was the leader of the Jerusalem church, and also met the elders and there was some business to be settled first before Paul could get on with the mission of evangelism. And this was regarding doctrine and false accusations and splits regarding traditions. Trials for Paul of a different nature, but in such situations that they came and what we can, today can be true for us, it is good to remain firm on Christian essentials, but flexible with non-essentials. It is getting the balance between holding on to your true convictions, but other times needing to allow space for mutual recognition of someone else's views and done for the sake of the gospel. So like Paul and like today, there are times when we can be distracted from using opportunities to speak about Jesus because there are other things that we have to deal with in our lives. But just like Paul, he didn't forget what Jesus had done for him and wanted others to have that same opportunity to come to faith in Jesus. And he was always eager to get back to the role of sharing about Jesus. So Jesus was finishing his work at the temple and as regards the, the business of addressing the concerns that were highlighted when he arrived in Jerusalem. But sadly, it wasn't long before he had to endure another trial. And this time it was a court trial. Some Jews who were from Asia had seen and heard what Paul was preaching in those areas which they believed were a threat to their faith and to their way of life. So they stirred up people by telling them lies about what Paul had been doing and saying in Ephesus. And these accusations were spread around and people came from all directions, bringing with them their righteous indignation and dragged Paul out of the temple and were trying to kill him. Fortunately, the Roman commander and his troops came to the rescue before Paul was going to be beaten to death. So Paul then got arrested and was put in change. Times haven't changed. How easy it is for false claims to be made and believed. Gossip becomes fact. Then there are people getting involved in a disturbance, yet they know to be honest, nothing about us, what it is all about. It's like, this, let's join and see what's happening here. So have any of us ever been falsely accused? Has someone told you what they overheard been said about you that had absolutely no truth in it? Sadly, families and friends have been split, sometimes never to be repaired by words that were wrongly spoken, even just carelessly said without thought? Have we needed to be vindicated that we were not guilty of what was spoken about us, that there was no truth in these accusations? Did we get justice or has it never been settled? And how would we react? How did we react? 
Well, how did Paul react to the false claims from the crowd and also from the commander, who in his ignorance thought that Paul was an Egyptian who had led a revolt of 4,000 people in Jerusalem? And as they say, never let the truth get in the way of a good story. Paul corrected what were false claims about who he was and what he had done. He spoke out the truth and Paul remained calm. He trusted in God, even in the midst of all the turmoil. He spoke simply and not getting flustered, standing on the hope that whatever happened, whether people believed him or not, Paul knew that he was speaking the truth. And more importantly, he knew that God knew the truth. That is sometimes, that is what definitely matters. And at times, that is what we have to do if we cannot get other people to believe what they said about us. So Paul then spoke to the commander and politely and respectfully asked for permission to speak to the crowd. In that way, he was giving the commander his place in making the decisions, regardless of what had just happened. So Paul did not let that distract him from what he knew that God would want him to do. He didn't hold it against him. He acted well. He acted in the truth. He acted wisely. Even though it may be a struggle, we need to stand on the truth and continue our work to be a witness for Jesus. So Paul, in his thoughtfulness, spoke to the crowd using a language that they understood and gave his testimony of how he came to faith. They listened intently and things seemed to be going well. But when he mentioned that the faith was also for the Gentiles, for all people, the uproar started all up again, bringing out the anger and prejudice that they had against others who were not like them. Such actions in a rabble of people make them deaf to any reasoning or understanding of what has been said. Closed minds to the good news. Would, you would hope when they went away and when things had calmed down, you would hope and they were back to their everyday lives, would they rethink about what they did and how they had behaved and remember anything of what was spoken, asking themselves as to why were they so disturbed and upset about what Paul said and actually then think about that and try and address their fears and their prejudice. So do we miss opportunities to listen to what God is saying to us, to what he wants to say, if only we would listen? Do we want to be disturbed by God? Or do we want to stay in a comfortable place and be content with our spiritual lives? So do we worry or are concerned that God will make us do something that we would certainly not be capable of? Well, he might do that because he knows that you are capable enough of doing things if you would only trust in him and be willing to step out. To remember that God has our best interests at heart. Are we fearful or are we content with our walk of faith? Would we be willing to sit down and have some just you, God, and me time? Just you and me. Learning how to listen and also openly share with God how you feel. God would love you if you are angry to share the anger with him rather than with other people. He has broad shoulders and my words over the centuries, he has heard everything that he would need to hear and know and see. There will be nothing that will astound him or make him gasp 
in astonishment. So be honest with him. It is good for the soul. A question is, and I think this, how would we explain to God when we stand before him and God says, I so missed having conversations with you, spending time with you. I had so much to give to you, so much help, so many blessings. Think about it. He is patiently waiting. And in all that, Paul's trials continued when the crowd began and became even more angry. But God was always there for Paul, as God is always there for us in the good times and the times of trial. The heart of Acts is so much about the gospel message, spreading the news, difficult as that may be for us. But the word needs desperately, desperately to be shared. So seek God in this matter. Seek his face. Seek to share the hope that we have as Christians. Jesus had a servant heart. Paul had a servant heart. In John 12, 26, Jesus says, My father will honor the one who serves me. Seek God to see how you can serve and share. So let us hear the reading from Acts 22, and Ian is going to come to read that. So we're reading from Acts 22, uh, verses 21 to 30. If you'd like to follow along, the Bible is page 1120. Then the Lord said to me, Go, I will send you far away to the Gentiles. The crowd listened to Paul until he said this. Then they raised their voices and shouted, Rid the earth of him, he's not fit to live. As they were shouting and throwing off their cloaks and flinging dust into the air, the commander ordered that Paul be taken into the barracks. He directed that he be flogged and interrogated in order to find out why people were shouting at him like this. As they stretched him out to flog him, Paul said to the centurion standing there, is it legal for you to flog a Roman citizen? who hasn't even been found guilty. When the centurion heard this, he went to the commander and reported it. What are you going to do, he asked. This man is a Roman citizen. The commander went to Paul and asked, tell me, are you a Roman citizen? Yes, I am, he answered. Then the commander said, I had to pay a lot of money for my citizenship. But I was born a citizen, Paul replied. And those who were about to interrogate him withdrew immediately. The commander himself was alarmed when he realized he had just put Paul, a Roman citizen, in chains. The commander wanted to find out exactly why Paul had been accused by the Jews. So the next day he released him and ordered the chief priests and all the members of Sanhedrin to assemble. Then he brought Paul and set him before them. This is God's word. Thank you, Ian. And that, that part of the Bible reading which we've been talking that God looks after you in all of that turmoil, being imprisoned, going to be beaten to death in chains, um, going to trial, which would probably be a bit askew. God rescued uh, Paul and he rescued him by two words, Roman citizen. What it was, why was it that at that point Paul 
decided I would speak those words. Why had he not spoke them long ago? But God had other things for him to do. Roman citizen meant that they couldn't go forward with the trial. And it is saying, no matter of the turmoil we're in, what we are going through, there will be words for God who will say he will rescue from that time. It may not, they may continue, but he will rescue at that time. They may be words of comfort, words of, if you're not sure of decision making, they will be words. And Paul just always listening to words sometimes, that is the breakthrough can change your life, to change your direction where you're going, because God needs, knows that you need to go somewhere else. So it was always for Paul, as we were saying, is as to seek God how we can serve and share. And like the mustard seed that grew into a tree of many branches, a few words scattered here and there can bear much fruit. It doesn't mean need to be Paul the standing up and, and giving a testimony but you can do that in, in small ways it doesn't need to be that you are the preaching or the teaching scatter the seeds of the gospel seek and you can find the way to share that is what's important share what we have with others it's too good to keep to ourselves so let us pray Heavenly Father, it can seem so challenging to serve and share. We may ask, is it worth the effort? Lord, let us be honest with you and share our real feelings as to why we struggle to let more of you into our lives, a struggle to share our faith. In truth, God, you already know what we put up as up obstacles, our reasons, our thoughts, yet you are still there listening with a face of love, understanding and patience, yearning for us to come to know you more and more. We would find, we would find out that we are welcomed like the prodigal child who was embraced by his father. Let us come to Jesus and sit in his presence and absorb, soak in his love, all forgiving love, being still and knowing that you are for us and not against us, that you have so much to give us, a better day with a better way, a start of a new journey that will make us wonder why we didn't do this before. Let us come into the throne room and sit at the feet of the Comforter. Let your Holy Spirit fall in this place. Come down and immerse us with your Holy Presence. As it says in the song, to be in your presence, to sit at your feet. When your love surrounds me, and makes me complete to rest in your presence, not rushing away, to cherish each moment, here I would stay. This is my desire, Lord, this is my desire. May we seek, serve, and speak, amen. We're going to uh, sing now Jesus' name above all names. And as we, as we sing, um, Ken and Ruth, our prayer ministry team, are going to be uh, down here. If there's anything that you uh, feel that God is putting a ha uh, maybe a, a finger on uh, in, in your life this morning, maybe, maybe you're in your, in your life journey, you're in a place of struggle at the moment, and you would just love... Uh, to find some, some answer, some breakthrough. Um, maybe you've been struggling on your own in that. 
Um, uh, Ken and Ruth would love to pray for you, to encourage you. Maybe you have another need. Uh, the, the Lord wants to bring healing this morning and to, to touch our lives uh, in the midst of our struggles. So let's stand and let's sing uh, Jesus' name above all names. Rosie said it's all about Jesus. It was Jesus that enabled Paul uh, and his companions to go through so many trials uh, in life and it was because of Jesus uh, that they did those, those things. As a loving parent, God loves it when we talk to him in prayer, not just about our own lives, but when out of love we pray for his help in others' lives too. We can not only have the opportunity to come for prayer ourselves in prayer ministry this morning. Uh, we're going to pray for others now. And as, as I lead us, so that we can all take part in the praying at the end of each uh, little section of prayer, when I say the words, loving Father, please will you respond by saying, hear our prayer. Loving Father, hear our prayer. Father God, thank you that even though we have all messed up in life, you love us wholeheartedly, unconditionally, and continually. And that through the love and the work of your Son, Jesus, and the power of your Holy Spirit, you enable each one of us to be forgiven from our past, become your child, and to call you our Father. 
If there's anyone here today who doesn't yet know that they are your son or daughter, please, Lord, would you help them to respond to your love and to simply say yes to you by asking Jesus to be their Lord and Saviour. Loving Father, hear our prayer. Father, your son Jesus was raised from birth under the loving care of Mary and Joseph and so we pray for your blessing today on all who are parents that they may model the care of their children uh, in your way. We pray also for those who raise and care for children in other ways, for foster parents, for children's social workers, for children's home staff, for all teachers and support staff in our local schools and playgroups. Loving Father, hear our prayer. Loving God, we thank you for the family of your church of which we are a part. We're all part of the big family of God as we sung earlier on. And we pray that all may find amongst us in your family their true home. That the lonely, the hurting and the rejected may be welcomed and loved in the name of Jesus by each one of us. And we pray this morning for any families living today under stress and pray that your perfect love may be felt and known, maybe where no human love is found. Maybe you know of a family under stress due to a breakdown in relationships, illness, debt, or some other issue. I invite you to pray for that family now. Loving Father, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray today for those for whom Mother's Day is painful. We pray for your comfort for those children and adults who have lost and missed their mothers and husbands who have lost their wives. We pray for your comfort for couples who long to be parents but as yet cannot. We pray for happily single women who feel pressure from others to be mums. Loving Father, please, with all, please be with all who hurt today to assure them of our love and of their value to you every moment of their lives. Loving Father, hear our prayer. We can thank our loving God that he hears and answers our prayers. In a moment of silence, we may each now lift to God any other burden or concern for ourselves, for another, or for our world. And remember, you can come for prayer as well. <coughs> Loving Father, hear our prayer. Now let's gather our spoken and silent praying together in saying the, the church family prayer that Jesus taught us. The words are on the screen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now, today is uh, uh, Mothering Sunday or Mother's Day, and we want to bless uh, not just uh, mums or grannies, but all of our women today. So, um, our children are just coming back in here. Welcome, uh, children. Great to have you back. Um, so we have some bunches of flowers at the front here. And I'm wondering, children, if you can maybe uh, help, help me uh, in giving out some flowers. Come on down, give, give us a hand. Um, so in a moment, we're going, we're going to be singing. Uh, great is your faithfulness. But before we do, if you remain seated... Uh, then um, if you are a woman, um, 
Put your hand up so that the children can see you, and they're going to come and bless you with a little gift of flowers from us. So what, one, for, one for every woman, okay? One for every woman, whether she's a mum or granny or not. Okay. One, one bunch per, 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 per woman, okay? Yeah, so... You've got, you've got four but five bunches there, all right? So you can go give one to each person. Lovely. Super. Thank you. You're going to go and deliver those. Thank you. Okay, just stick your hands up, ladies, just so that they can see you. Come on, don't be shy. Don't be shy. Stick your hands up. Stick your hands up. (laughs) (laughs) Who's not got? Come on. There we are. All right. One over here. go. Come on, come on, put your hands up if you haven't got one. Come on, be bold. Be bold. Who's not got flowers? I can see, I can, is, is, is there some of you in the back there not got flowers? You've all got flowers? Don't be shy. Is that every woman who's, who's got a flower or a gift of flowers? That's lovely. Well, listen, we just want to, to bless you today. We pray that you're going to have a, a, a wonderful day. don't know whether you're going to be having a lunch with your family uh, or not today, but, but what, whatever, we just want to bless you and thank God uh, for you. Let's um, stand together and sing, Great is Your Faithfulness.
for tomorrow. Blessings all mine with 10,000 beside. May you know strength for today and hope for tomorrow because God walks with you in the person of Jesus. As we finish, let's turn uh, to one another and let's uh, bless one another with the words of the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Prayer ministry is still available down here. If some of you um, are maybe going to go and see your mum, uh, there is a, a few bunches of flowers left down here. If you'd like to take uh, a bunch of flowers just to bless somebody else with, then please, uh, please do that.